Hi everyone and welcome to the Smackdown pre-show podcast. You are rightfully back with the hostess with the mostess. It is me. It is not Joe Simpkins. It is not your shop security guard. It is back with the host here. Thank God, ladies and gentlemen, that we've restored order here to Team Blue. Uh, I'm ro- joined here by Ross. Correct. Hello. Joined here by James Dixon. Hello, Kenny. That is his real name, James Dixon. We clarified that. So we're going to talk about SmackDown. We're going to talk about. Uh, now you you did this last week, right? Without me. Or did, 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 did oh, that was did a it... memorable experience with Joe and the Jobber. <laughs> Take us through your 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 favourite part of that. <sighs> the end when it finished. Well, I mean, I, I, I didn't get a chance to watch it because I was washing my hair. But um, So Smackdown then. Smackdown. Right. So we're going to kick off talking about uh, last night on Raw, the go-home show for Survivor Series. They brought Team Blue out onto the show. Talking about Raw and Smackdown podcast there. No, because Smackdown was on Raw last night. So that's why we're talking about it. Cause you know people... what you want to do before we continue is move yourself from that cover because you're going to go through it. I don't mind. It'll be entertaining for the match. So for the people who are listening to this, um, <laughs> James has decided that he can no longer stand on these video casts, so he is sitting in a chair, and the chair is not... It's on one of those flaps. To but you see the... how I'm not like uncomfortably moving around like you guys? I'm fine. You don't look fine. <laughs> you could plonk me in a western bar with a, a cowboy hat, and I'd be right at home if I stood like this. Right? We could. Um, but okay, Ross, I'll go to you first since he's wanting to be difficult. Um, they do they do Raw last night, go home show for Survivor Series. They have SmackDown on the show. Uh, what do you think? We'll get to the state of the WWE address in a minute. But in terms of Raw, Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon, they turn up. Uh, what did you think of the segment with them and, and Mick and Stephanie? Quite intense, wasn't it? That's Shane. all I've got to say about it. That's it? The run-in, there to be expected, especially when you saw about 3,000 people with the, the fireflies out. Ruining it for everybody. I don't know if you picked up on that, but I did. Well, it's uh, your job to pick up on it. Exactly. It's a, it's a moment. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't, actually. There we go. That happened anyway. That happened. Uh, Jericho was a barrel of laughs. Sugar tits. Or sugar tit. Sugar singular. tit. Singu- a singular tit. Yes. Um, and his, his exchange with James Ellsworth. Uh, which, you know... There's, there's a child a... on the loose. <laughs> Chins McMahon. It's also a fun thing, but... <laughs> Do you reckon he was clear to say that before no. he did? I don't think he was I think either. he just said it. That yeah, segment was the best on Raw in a while. Right? Yeah, yeah. They did. Goldberg stuff aside, I think. But I thought they did a good job in kind of hyping the Survivor Series main event. I, I haven't been as excited to see a WWE pay-per-view in months, years maybe. I think the build-up's been brilliant. I think it's actually. been a better build than WrestleMania. Yeah, I'd agree. Like without, I mean, without WrestleMania build-up was terrible. So it's it was, it was. Example, But the build-up's been brilliant. Really, really looking forward to the show. So one of the main contention points on Raw last night and on the state of WWE address and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. is the fact that Shane is in the match. Shane McMahon is the fifth member of the team. Last week in Glasgow, they made it happen. Yeah. Um, what do you think about him being the fifth member Amazing. of the team? Amazing. Because it's not Baron Corbin. <laughs> Who you so. are firmly behind, as always. What have they done to my big Baron? That's the question. What have they done to him? They built him with this monster for months, and then all of a sudden he's... Did a, they, though? He's yeah. a, I mean, all he did was beat up Kalisto yeah, a few times. Yeah, he had pointless... They, they meant nothing, but he was killing folk. If, Jack you're, if you're a Baron Corbin fan, you should be pleased about this. Because they've they done... Had, they booked him no, man. slipping off the bloody apron I know, while he was walking. But, but they did it in quite a good way. It, it was, was effective. D- he was walking along the apron, and he fell off. To I be fair, though... Okay. I, I was in the arena. I was, I, I was in the arena, and I legitimately you thought, bought it, right? yeah, I totally bought it. I Either thought way, though, it made him like an absolutely a horrible, clumsy man. Well, he is without swearing. But he now is. he's not. He's fantastic. But now you know we we Kalisto, uh came in. He got his wee bit of revenge. Baron Corbin will kill him again, which is good. Looking forward to it. But um. Because, I mean, um, here's what I took from it. I took from it that they're doing the Survivor Series match with Braun Strowman. They're probably going to do some sort of, like, yeah, I think it's DQ. They're counted out or he just walks off. And they would kind of have to do a similar thing with Corbin, yeah, right, the, to protect him where he Corbin is. So you can't do the same thing twice. Corbin. But Shane is the wrong choice. Why? Because who would be the better choice? choice? Okay. Who, I can't give you a name. Who but sold it goes, out WrestleMania? It's a com- it's, who sold goes, out WrestleMania? It goes against Undertaker, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Roman no. Reigns. I don't care about Brock Lesnar and <laughs> WrestleMania. Triple what I'm going to say is the new era is about. There's a direct quote from Shane McMahon, which I can't remember directly. This is just. This is no, so it's it, not a direct quote. Yeah, from this is. It. I'm just. I'm. Okay. Sum, I'm yeah. Summarise. I'm paraphrasing. paraphrasing. Oh, I want it for. Um, <laughs> the new era is about the superstars and not the management. But here we are with Shane McMahon in the biggest matches of. Wait, well, the second biggest matches of Survivor Series. Here's here's the thing that's interesting because this on the state of the WWE. 
universe that it was called. A, a very intense twenty minutes of uh, of Shane and Mick Foley and Stephanie and Danny Bryan all kind of going back and forth. You've got Foley bringing up the fact that you know I'm here because I love this job. Daniel Bryan, you don't even want to be here. You're here because you're under contract. You've got Brian saying, you know, you were here before and you quit and went to TNA and wrestled. <laughs> um, Good point, well made. Yeah. Sh- Shane and Stephanie are going at it, and at the end, like Shane's saying, I can't wait to be at Thanksgiving and be in front of the table so Mum can be proud of me. And she's like, well, don't worry, Dad's prouder of me. Like, it was it was intense. Like, it, But for me, like, I, I look at it kind of like you were saying, like, there's nobody else on SmackDown. Shane makes the match feel bigger. Mm-hmm. It's There's more stakes in it. True, but it just goes against the whole it does, concept but, of the new era. But they haven't got it? anybody who's suitable, really. There's nobody ready yet. Like, that, one of the things. problem, is It is. Their fault. It's, it is their fault. I mean, why isn't it Undertaker? That's my question. Wait, that's, what I, it's, that's what I'm predicting is going to happen. Because but tonight, tonight, tonight I on SmackDown. I reckon Shane might get wiped out tonight by somebody. Maybe his name begins with B and ends with Ock. Do you let you Lesnar's making it? Uh, can, you can, can you crack that code for the, uh, nah. the people at home? I don't know. I just think it's gonna it's gonna be like his debut. I think the unnamed fifth guy. Do you think you'll be going to take his debut tonight? Do you think no, you know, it's gonna? Do you think he'll be God announced God. as the replacement tonight or on Sunday? Both. Well, Both. It can only be one or the other. Yeah. Why, can't, why? Can't, where can't, is it can't first? Announce it where is it first announced? Like no, because it's a different match tonight. Is what Kenny's. Getting that. There's a six man tonight with an unannounced sixth man. Can you right. tell the tell the people at home what the match is? I can't remember who it is, but Ellsworth in it. Is it not AJ Styles, Bray Wyatt, and Randy Orton against Ellsworth, Ambrose, Ambrose and a mystery partner, mystery partner who Shane will choose? Yeah, he'll yeah. pick himself. So, I mean, worst case scenario, he's going to pick himself. So that's what'll happen. But I think on Sunday, definitely nailed on. We're going to have a second, like just the same thing that happened at his debut way back when, when I wasn't even born. So you think Brother Love's going to be there? No. Please, God, no. <laughs> Please, God, don't you bring mean, that man back. He has a very good podcast that's entirely truthful. It's a great fictional podcast. I I feel bad because I, I, like Bruce Pritchard does this podcast and it is quite entertaining to listen to. And I listened to a couple and I enjoyed it. And then I made the mistake of listening to the Montreal Screwjob podcast. Now, the problem with that is that if you're not friends with James Dixon... That's fine to listen to that podcast. <laughs> but if you are, and you know how much of his life was consumed by writing a book on the Montreal Screwjob and the facts of the event, like, it's... Anyway. That's the key, isn't it? The, that's, the, that's, facts. the facts are key. But by the point, I'm going to make some money. So, Undertaker's going to be in the Survivor Series match. Oh, yeah. I bet you oh, one gosh. English pounds that he is not. Who will be? Anybody but Undertaker. Well, that's just stack the odds in the old Not really. Game, you said nailed on that the Undertaker. Uh, shake it properly. We have, the we have, we have a handshake here, legit. One the pound is handshake. on the line. Uh, if Undertaker is going to be, I hope team. you're right though. My bowels are out. I think. So let me, let me let me defer to you then, Mister Dixon. Yeah. Uh, Nine hundred episode of SmackDown tonight. Yeah. Uh, Undertaker is going to be on it. What do you think he does? Do you think this is the build for a WrestleMania program for him? Is it just a one-off appearance? What do you What does your I, gut say he's going to do? I think. The fact that he's doing something tonight means he's doing mania. Yeah. Because he's not just having his last match and then coming out for a na- random 900th episode. Not so soon. No. It doesn't make sense. Especially um, when he knows everybody's going to be talking about him at this point. Right. right. But I think his WrestleMania program will be either Goldberg or Cena. I think they're the obvious two. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't see how you can set up either of them tonight. So, or really at Survivor. So if you, that guy who begins with B and ends in Ock turns up, Bill might turn up as well. Yeah, I'm but then talking you're utter nonsense people. here. Right. So right. basically, you're going, you're going to the Simpkin School of Knowledge here. You're saying that essentially Brock Lesnar and Goldberg may turn up on SmackDown tonight. Because, yeah, I'm delirious. A bit tired. <laughs> I think you've... It's been a long day. We've gone and deep we into are. the realms of fantasy booking. We, we have. Let's, nice get, let's get back to reality. Um, no, man, that, it'd be great if Lesnar and Goldberg were on tonight, but... Why? Why would Lesnar be on SmackDown? It feels like Shane's going to do something on Sunday to Lesnar. Mm, maybe like that because the last thing that much. happened was Shane got taken out by Brock Lesnar. So Brock's done his thing. Like it, Shane's now the guy. Who's Shane tired. versus Lesnar at Mania. Yeah, maybe they do yeah, that on yeah, Sunday. Maybe yeah. maybe Le- maybe Lesnar just comes out and maybe they have a backstage thing and then Lesnar takes him out during the match or something. The the traditional well, match. The, the question is this: How are they going to get out of this Goldberg? Lesnar match because ordinarily you'd think Lesnar's going to kill him Lesnar's getting his win back 
it's one and done for Bill, and and that's it. But the reaction to him has been amazing. Last and it gets night, better and better. Yeah, I mean, last night that was the loudest reaction Goldberg's had, I would say, since the Georgia Dome, right? Since he beat Hogan, it was huge. It was amazing. And Heyman did a lot to get that to happen. Heyman but... was brilliant as usual, but you can't just beat Goldberg now because you're going to want to use him again. I mean, they should. They're going to want to use him at Mania. It, it makes a lot of sense. So you can't just beat him. So maybe Taker's involved in the finish. Maybe Shane's involved in the finish. They both have history with Brock. Um, something Battleground 15 all over again. Something that you brought up. <laughs> where Taker came back. Something that you brought up a minute ago. You were, talk, power. You were talking about the new era um, and how that's not really been into here too. And one of the things they talked about in the State of the Universe thing was Daniel Bryan was trying to say that Mick Foley can't understand the problems that the new generation face. And, you know, he was essentially talking about actually the other guys coming back and all that sort of stuff. Um, does Goldberg Lesnar at Survivor Series, and it, this is a SmackDown podcast, so I'm going to relate it back to SmackDown. Does Goldberg Lesnar, as a match, do anything to undermine the SmackDown brand, do you think? Or does it make the them stronger? That, <coughs> the not... fact that it's all been on Raw, yeah. <coughs> I'm going to choke. What was I going to say? But bro, uh, Brock's a raw superstar, isn't he? Mm-hmm. So obviously that makes sense from that point of view. But Goldberg is unassigned, so he could have had him done something on SmackDown, but they've just completely neglect- neglected SmackDown and just he neglected could SmackDown Smack- afterwards. So yeah, he might declare himself as part of SmackDown. Ooh, that would be interesting. Make it wouldn't it? It'd be something. Um, also, nine hundred episodes tonight. We're gonna have the cutting edge with the return of Edge. Well, why are you holding me back? Because James he, Dixon is not an Edge fan, I and mean, I can I, sense where this is his going. His legs are too long. He is too long. <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I, I actually like his. I like his promos. I just, I'm not a huge. I, I respect what he's done. I'm just not a huge fan of his work. Do you know? I was uh, watching a. Uh, I was another podcast that I do that one name. Um, I had to do a review of it's Armageddon inside 2007. Inside, inside the ropes. The ropes yeah. um, and we have a Patreon page, and we, and we we had to review Armageddon 2007. And the main event in that show was Undertaker, Batista, and Edge. And it was an Edge won the world title, and it arguably took him onto his biggest program of all time with the Undertaker main event in WrestleMania, all that sort of stuff. But do you think that maybe the reason that some people are not big fans of Edge, Mr. Dixon, um, is because, like, I looked it up and Edge won a world title, whether it's WWE or World, 11 times in six years. Like, do you think maybe the fact that he had so many reigns hurt it? I mean, I don't it? care about that, really. But does that hurt it because he wasn't really cemented? You can, it's hard to cement yourself as a main uh, eventer if you're yeah, constantly he's been around losing it, winning it, losing it, winning it, losing it. Winning it, winning it, winning it. you know, he, he paid his dues. He was he was great in 2000 and 2001. I, I liked him then. I just didn't... Not even I 2006, never, the stuff was seen? No, I, I liked his character. I, I just didn't love his work. I Edge, thought his matches were very safe. Edge fan? Yeah, neither here nor there for me. I, I don't dislike him. It's not Baron Corbin, too. No, no, no. no, no, no. Of course not. Um, the cutting edge tonight, all the members of the SmackDown Ross, uh, team from the male team, along with the mascot, James Ellsworth. Any predictions for this? Is it all going to kick off? Edge will make fun of James's chin because he's got a big chin and James hasn't got one. It'll be a barrel of laughs. <laughs> be good. And uh, last kind of prediction uh, for the show. Um, Dolph Ziggler and The Miz for the IC title. A lot of kind of stakes in this because it has been arguably one of the best programmes on SmackDown since the since it kicked off in September. Um, and obviously whoever wins goes on to face Sami Zayn on Sunday. That could then implicate the title going to Raw. Uh, who is walking out of SmackDown 900 with the IC It's irrelevant because either way, the IC title's going to roll and the crew's going to go to SmackDown. That's where all things are happen. So who really? is going Who is going to mm. Who is going to Survivor Series this year? Since I think that's happening, it would make sense for Ziggler. I think. Ziggler keeps it. Ziggler keeps it. I, mean, I think Ziggler will keep it, but I don't think it's going to go to SmackDown. I think the Cruiserweights will. But why would the, there be two singles titles on Raw? Yeah, there would. There'd be a whole Cruiserweight division on SmackDown. Yeah, but there'd be no secondary belt for anyone to go for on SmackDown. They could make a new one. They could Everyone cut weight. enough belts. Is, 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 sure, maybe the US belt could come over this. Miz could cut weight down to Cruiserweights. We could make it like a UFC-style presentation. Matt Hardy all over again. V1. See, that, that was good. good. That's, that's that was good. I can't do it. I can only do the Star Wars thing. Yeah. Is that Star Wars? Is it, what's that? What was that? Is that starts about, a, you know, well, not a million. A million people <laughs> won't watch us. Thousands of people <laughs> hate well, you right now. Hate Star you. Trek, innit? Join the club. Mm. Join the club. Crap either way, innit? Oh, everyone. Everyone hates <laughs> um, us. In terms... So Talk in, about The Miz, though, first. The, the Miz. Cause How I, good has he been this I year? feel like... I don't know if it's a set in stone thing that Ziggler's going to retain tonight, because I feel like... I'm only saying that because I think that's... The gonna... Miz is so much more interesting. Oh, I mean, yeah. 
talking yeah. smack promo last week with Maurice wasn't great, but apart from that, like he's been nailing it every single week. He's had an amazing year. Consider, remember the, how much everyone was so angry when he won that belt. Um, a couple of weeks after Mania, it was a couple the day, of, after. day after Mania, wasn't it? Sorry, you beat him on Raw the night yes, after, and everyone was just like, well. "Oh, the Miz," and it was just that big sigh of disappointment from everybody. But now he's one of the hottest guys they've got again. It, it reminds me of when he won the world title all those years ago, and like people look back on that now and sort of mock it, and I, I get why, but at the time he totally warranted. But it. he was in a no-win situation because he won the belt from Randy Orton, and it was and it was great. And then immediately he was the background fodder for John Cena and The Rock, and there was he nothing. Was, there was but he nothing. Did justify being champion at that time? He did justify being champion, but I think that ultimately, like, it's like you know Jericho talk about the end he beat Steve Austin and The Rock yeah, the same yeah. night, and it's like those matches were dreadful. Yes, they were. They were dreadful. Yes. Um, the WrestleMania main event with Cena and Miz was pretty dreadful. So yeah. But he did retain it at WrestleMania, and he can always say that as part of his thing. But I think the thing with Miz that I think a lot of the SmackDown roster don't have and he does, is you can see that he's like, I, I want to be the best guy, I want to be on top, I want to make more money, I want to cement he a has, legacy. He has star appeal that a lot of guys don't have. And, you know, for the longest time in the last few years, he hasn't had that, but he's he's got it back this year. And Dolph as well, you know, Dolph's had a terrible couple of years, really, character-wise. Oh, yeah, he is pointless. How much of it, how, problem, how much he's had a great year. How much of Dolph's lack of uh, push... Is down to Dolph rather than the push that he gets. Ask Dolph, ask Vince. I don't know. What do you think? I'm asking. What I, you think. I think if you're that talented, because he is talented when he's motivated, um, and you don't get the breaks, there's something going on behind That's the scenes. They say, there. isn't it? There's always a reason. Yeah, I mean, uh, then again, though, <laughs> Cesar, like Cesaro gets the same kind of treatment, and he's universally acclaimed by everybody. Really. But I guess the, the thing with Cesaro, it seems, is more that Cesaro is not great at promos because he's foreign. No, I don't, I don't English think English is his for- first language. No, but Rusev's great at promos and he's foreign. Correct. There you go. All right, boom. Um, so, in terms of SmackDown and Survivor Series, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about from the state of WWE uh, universe was Daniel Bryan's assertion that SmackDown since the draft has used their superstars a lot better than Raw. He says that... They've if used you, them a lot more. A lot, <laughs> yeah. But he says things like, you know, we've all of the guys that we've got, if you look at them from where the draft happened to now, they are all in better... Most of them are all in better places than they were at the beginning, whereas for Raw... Some have regressed. Um, do you think SmackDown has used their talent better since July? Ziggler Miz, yes, definitely. James Ellsworth. James Ellsworth, well, he wasn't even there, was he? Yeah, but he's still, he's come from nothing and now he's... AJ become, Styles. Oh, God, he AJ, shouldn't absolutely. be, though, AJ. Yeah. Whether he should be or not, it's irrelevant, though. He, st- he still is. And, and yeah, Baron Corbin as well is better off now than he was when he was on Raw. The Heath Slater thing was, I mean, I think it's right, yeah. course, now. But it's just who's, really who's regressed on SmackDown? Apollo Crews? Kalisto. Kalisto. That's it. Has really, Kalisto isn't? regressed? Oh, yeah, he's really? always been he rubbish. Was getting, he's he was always getting TV naff. time, though, wasn't he? I know he's been injured. Yeah. So I've, I've just That's talked nonsense part. again. Might thing is, just leave. there's this misconception, <laughs> though, like that Raw is written by Vince and thus that's why it's bad and SmackDown's not. But that's SmackDown's just, got the true. old NXT guy. Yeah, but it it's still Vince well, at the top smart, overseeing like, it all. I, that is that is true, but I do think there's an element of Ryan Ward in there because the, the, it's not a secret that SmackDown has gotten a lot better and NXT has gotten a lot worse. Mm. And when the guy who was writing that has switched... You know, it's, what do you mean? It's, Triple H was writing it all. Of course he was. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of uh, the women's division of SmackDown, that's probably where, there's, where it's the weakest in terms of... You've got Becky Lynch, who is so good in the ring, compared to the other women. Who, oh, I mean, Natalia is good in the ring, but she's... Nat- crazy crazy cat though, lady you know. with a whistle. Natalia yeah. can't act in any way, no, shape, no, shape no. or form. She walks around like she's holding a fart constantly. <laughs> well, she was she for did a while. That I know she did, but she's just bringing it back. So Look at you just flinging knowledge out of the place. Um, <laughs> knowledge is power. And knowledge is power. Um, so let's talk about a couple of the women quickly going into Sunday and just how we feel about them and their progression so far on SmackDown. Since I don't know if you knew this, um, but Sunday is Fantasy Warfare. Uh, and Sunday come is to life. Come to life. And also, Sunday is where two brands will fight to become the, the only dominant. time this year. The only, not the Royal Rumble. Vince McMahon selling the whole brand extensions and going head to head every bloody week. Merch sales, TV ratings, the lot. Bollocks! Can we keep that in? Um, Bollocks, yeah. We can, yeah. Well, we all have them. Well, not all of us. Half the nation. Um, so, Smackdown. 
the women's division. <laughs> Becky Lynch is on top, but, uh, well, you know, I don't want to get her proclivities, but Becky Lynch is there, and she's very good. But then you've got Alexa Bliss. You're a dirty man. You <laughs> you've got Alexa Bliss. She's children. done well she's recently, just... though. She has. But here's... You have good matches. She but has. I, I'm, with, I'm with you. You're the man that says come in as a better heel. I think so. I think she's more. I think she's more believable in the heel persona. I think that Alexa Bliss is. It's not really connecting for me as much. It's just. It's great facials and empty words with Alexa Bliss. Yeah. She's got a fantastic scouring look. She when looks she very. Says, oh, your life's pathetic. What are they? What is? What's that? She looks very scripted. No, the, very overly scripted. But it's, the women's division's never been known for its strong acting. Well, here, here's oh, the, here, here's a particular. question because obviously the, the Raw women's team is stronger than the SmackDown one. Sure, just by stronger. just by default that you've got Becky and then everybody else, whereas in Raw you've got Sasha, Bailey, Charlotte, and yeah, and, 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 and Nia's nice, you know Nia's getting there. Nice I, I like her. Um, but here's my question: since this is about SmackDown, mm-hmm. Raw has no problems going to WrestleMania season with a women's title. You could do Bailey, Charlotte. You can do Sasha, Bailey. You can do any combination of those three, or all three together. But for SmackDown, I assume Becky Lynch is the champ going at WrestleMania. Who on that roster of women... You forget about Nikki Bella. Is that the match? Is that Probably. the SmackDown match? Probably. And do you think Nick? Because one of the things that I've always thought about Nikki uh, Bella... I think it's a SmackDown pre-show match, yeah. Why could it be Asuka? It, well, it should oh, be, but should will be she be brought up in time? That's no I mean, way. Who's, if, if she goes from NXT, that's completely dead in the water, isn't it? The women's division down there. No, because the, the sign a couple of, of new girls who, who are good... You know, they just need to It'll take a while to build, though, don't they? they? Need to new get faces. On with it. Yeah, they need to go. But they, they they had a problem where they had these four women that kind of revolutionised a new era in that company, mm-hmm. and then they all left. And well, Bailey was the last one left, yeah, so she took was a while like, for Bailey, but yeah. with Bailey, it was at twenty days later. She was just walking about. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> Nikki Nikki Bell is an interesting one because when, when I was at SmackDown last week in Glasgow, when she came out, she got one of the biggest pops of the night, like top two or three. Every week. She is a big star, like, but I don't think she's ever had a classic wrestling match. But is that important for her to have that? Like, if she has a match with Becky at WrestleMania, like, I feel like she needs that kind of match to have people finally take her seriously depends, in the ring. It depends what you're talking about. I mean, is success judged based on her ability in the ring or in her merchandise sales or on a pop? So she's never going to draw money. No. She's never going to main event. You know, but she, could she she's have... never going to have a great match. She can have a, an okay match. You know, that's been kind, I think. Um, but she sells merchandise, I'm sure. You know, female fans seem to be drawn to her. And, you know, when you push someone as a star, whether they are or not, people will eventually perceive them as such. That's true. Uh, what would you like to see the SmackDown women's feud be going into WrestleMania, given the roster they have? He's thinking, folks. It's got to be Becky and someone, sure. Well, obviously, yeah, Becky and my take. Carmella? I don't know. It's, it's not made Do you want to see Becky and Nikki? Not particularly, you know. Do you want to see Becky I've seen Asuka? enough of Nikki over the past two years in this job. <laughs> yeah. Having to watch every single show. They've, I mean, they should have had one of Charlotte, you know, Sasha or Bailey on SmackDown, yeah. really, and split them in half. Yeah. yeah. Unfair on Becky. Or really just kept the women's division on one show. On Natalia? Natalia's a bastard, isn't she? She's a heel. Yeah, she's just. You're allowed to say bastard, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, we know. Like, <laughs> I'm just not. Hot. I'm just I thought you were going, oh, we're going to have to edit now. No, she's not. not a great character. She's a good worker. She's not a great character. Yeah, but she gets good all. matches out of Yeah, but you you don't. I, f- I find you don't get emotionally invested in Natalia matches because the story going in is always a bit naff. Well, you don't, you don't buy her as a character, which yeah. is the problem. Yeah, and she didn't really have one apart from doing. She's just weird, isn't she? Slop from the yeah. Goonies. Yeah. Yeah! And it's funny because one of the things that one of the things that, she does, <laughs> she does. One of the things that Mick does. Foley said on the state thing tonight or last night was, uh, he said, "How can you have a women's team and not have Natalia?" It on makes it? no sense. No, I mean, and it, and, it, and it is ridiculous. You know, for all the things that they say on SmackDown, she really should be on that team. Brie Bella might be back, post child. <laughs> That's a while away yet, though, isn't it? She said she's going to come back, all right? But she's recently she pregnant. When, Vet- she, when she due? Must be a few months down the line. Well, we can it? all look forward to that this time. Very year, quickly, though, before we kind of finish up and and, and uh, finish the, the hype for SmackDown 900, uh, James Dixon tomorrow night. I'm just putting that in here. The return of Total Divas. 
I'm excited. back. I'm excited. We have WrestleMania. We have Lana. Yeah. We have a meltdown from Maurice. We have Natalia wanting to drink vodka. Or Is Lana Advil. American in this? Like she's on Total yes. Bellas. Yeah. Oh, this is a Total. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's Total Divas. Total Bellas has finished, and the yeah, the Total cliffhanger at the end was it was leading at WrestleMania 32. The only bit of kayfabe has been protected is Lana, and it's just been obliterated thanks to those horrible shows. Great shows is what you mean. Horrible. Why so are they horrible? I find it interesting Because they've just ruined Lana. What do you mean? There would have been a, a group yes. of people out there would have been fooled into thinking she's actually Russian. Well, all those people who used to watch her when she was a cheerleader. Do they watch wrestling? I don't know. Some Can't. of them. They're American football fans, aren't they? Oh, is there no, no difference? You know, come on. That was the one shred of kayfabe we had. Right. It's gone. But total I'm Divas just, is going to be disgusted. great. It's going to be... Del Rio's really, on it. How I know Del Rio and Paige. Is that gonna that's going to be interesting. Um, we don't have enough time to get into this discussion, but I will just say, what I find interesting about the people who don't like those shows, because they do kind of talk about the kayfabe element and stuff, is that, you know, some of those people are the same people who go to indie shows and chant flippy SH something T, which is basically them admitting... That, was, that letter was it, I, if anyone... Admitting that, it. like... It's a it's a choreographed thing, and we're you're coming out oh, the side of the know? story. Did you like, not know? I'm aware. All right, but like I don't we all know. That, I just we I all just, know. I sit there. Do you watch documentaries on the network? Yeah. That was that was any different? Because they're documentaries. So it's total divas. So it's a realistic <laughs> documentary style show. Hey, I, I've got to admit, I went through. What, I went through the whole process of realizing it's not real for a second time. I watched the first series of Total Divas, <laughs> think it was real, up, in, up until the shoot Hurricane Rana. And I thought I'm going to. Oh, to I'm going to have to Google this and see what what's what's going on. And it, uh, I went through that whole process again and find out that it's not real. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, That's why I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> I feel cheated. Ross, Ross had wrestling spoiled for him a second time by thinking an entire season of Total Divas was real. Naomi and a uh, shoot Hurricane Rana. Really? Cannot. Welcome to Raw this. and those main event <laughs> banners. That didn't tip you off. Though. Um, SmackDown 900. One prediction for tonight. Go. Undertaker will walk out, stand there, point at the sign, disappear, the end. There is no sign, but okay. Well, shame, Ross, shame will get wiped problem. out. <laughs> His space will be left open. Undertaker will swoop in on Sunday. They might may put a sign there specifically for him to point at. The WrestleMania signs are going to be there tonight. If he needs to point at something, it will be. Is it the Royal Rumble? We start with that shenanigans. <laughs> gonna say, anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, thank so you well. very much for listening. Um, you can find James on Twitter at HOW Wrestling. You can find me at Kenny MC1985, no, not, not 95. <laughs> Sorry. And you can find uh, Ross at Ross on Wrestling. Wrestling with no W in there. Uh, lads, thank you very much. We will be back next week to talk about the post Survivor Series Fallout. Uh, leading into SmackDown 901. See you then. Bye. Bye. Wow.